I'm Sylvia from Vintage Kitchen Vixen, where I share tips for simple living, creating memorable gatherings, and preparing wholesome and traditional recipes with a vintage twist. And today I'm going to be going over how to cook dried beans. But before I dive into the virtues of using dried beans, I want to welcome you. So if you are coming back to the kitchen, you know I am always so happy to have you here, so thank you for joining me today. And if you are brand new to the kitchen and this is your very first episode, I really hope you enjoy what you see today and that you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you never miss an episode. I do encourage you to check out one of my recipe videos because I do this little thing called silent film mode and I have a lot of fun with it and I think most of my viewers are a fan of it too. So check one of those recipes out. I put out one new recipe a week, so definitely take a look at one of those. I have all kinds of delicious ideas and my favorite recipes just floating around on my channel. Anyhow, let's get into it. So dried beans. First off, if you've been with me for a while, you know I am a frugal gal. I like saving money where I can on the kitchen so that I can reallocate those savings toward areas that matter to me. For example, supporting local farmers. So whether that's for vegetables, whether that's for farm fresh eggs, or for meat that was sustainably raised. I have a video that's full of my frugal kitchen tips and rules that I follow in my own kitchen. So if you're interested in learning more about the areas that I save money in the kitchen, or at least cut corners in the kitchen, I do have a video and a blog post that goes into it, so you can check out the video. I'll link it in the description below if that is of interest to you. Anyhow, dried beans. They are so much cheaper than buying their canned counterparts, and usually the cans are lined with BPA, which uh, bis bisphenol, I'm not even going to hurt myself trying to say that word, but it's not good for you. In fact, Okay, so do everything that you can to avoid products that are stored in cans that are lined with BPA. It's, you're, you're better off without it. The other benefit of using dried beans as opposed to canned beans is that you are able to have full control over the sodium content. So canned beans, unless you're spending a little bit more money, so apparently buying beans that have less sodium is more expensive than beans that have more sodium probably because the beans with more sodium have a better shelf life. And then sometimes there are other additives as well that are contained in those beans. So always read the labels. No matter what you buy, always read the labels. And if you don't know what something is, or if you can't pronounce it, research that ingredient, learn what it's used for, what the purpose is, and what else it is used in. Because there are a lot of food additives that are multi-purpose. So they're not only contained in food, but they are used to thicken paints and all kinds of things like that. So. Just be mindful of that. And in addition to the sodium content, you also control the flavor. Uh, and then the third benefit to using dried beans is it's cheaper. At the time of filming this, there is a pandemic going on, COVID-19, and a couple weeks ago, store shelves were completely wiped out. Dried beans disappeared off the shelf, which shocked me because those are normally things that lay untouched because people reach for cans because they're convenient. Because when you use dried beans, you need to plan ahead because you need to soak them overnight and then you have to cook them before you use them unless you're using them in a soup. But you can also pop them in an instant pot or you can do like a, a fast cook, but it's always better to soak your beans as opposed to rush through them. So soaking and just, just taking your time with cooking and preparing dried beans it's worth it. It really surprised me that dried beans, like it didn't surprise me because it's one of the pa those pantry staples and everybody knows whether or not they usually buy dried beans, everybody knows that dried beans are one of those pantry staples that you want to have on hand in case of an emergency because you can live off of pots of beans and rice for weeks if uh, you have nothing else to eat. And hopefully none of us have to resort to that, but if you have beans and you have rice and water, you can survive. What really surprised me though is that all these beans disappeared because I don't think that many people actually know how to cook beans. Today I'm just walking you through it. Maybe you know how to cook beans already, maybe you don't. It's something I almost always do. Sometimes I do have my lazy moments and I don't plan and I will use a can of beans. It doesn't happen very often, but I do try to keep a couple cans in my pantry just in case. But for the most part, I buy my beans in bulk because it's cheaper and then I store them in glass containers. But to begin with, the first thing that I do when I have beans on the menu 
the night before or a couple nights before because you can prepare the beans in advance. They're going to keep in your fridge for at least a week. Usually I use mine up between three and four days, but the first step that you are going to take, oh shoot, is you are going to measure one cup. Let's do, what am I going to make? What do I want to use? I'm going to make, ch I'm going to use chickpeas because I want to make a hummus. So one cup of dried beans usually approximately yields three cups of cooked beans. So you kind of want to sort through them before you do anything, just in case there are little stones or pebbles in there. And my batch seems to be okay. I also usually remove any beans that have been cut in half. I don't know why I do that. I just do it. And then you don't have to measure the water. I just fill it up until there's enough water in there. I just had a bean that floated up to the top, so I usually get rid of the little floating beans as well, but now that's gonna soak overnight. And tomorrow, when I'm ready to cook the beans, I'm going to drain them, and I'm going to rinse them in water, and then from there, I'm going to put them into a large cooking pot. I'm going to throw in a bay leaf for flavor. I almost always use a bay leaf in my beans, or alternatively, if you have it, you can use a piece of kombu, which is seaweed and is often used in stocks. And I've never really done it with beans. I probably should because I have a bunch of kombu. I've never opened up the package, but I have it. So I should try it out. If you're using a bay leaf or a piece of kombu, you put it in and you bring that pot to a boil. If you want to add salt, do not add salt at this time because if you do, your beans are going to be tough and you do not want tough beans. Once the pot of beans comes to a boil, you are going to turn that pot of water down to a simmer and you are going to partially cover it with the lid and you are going to put the timer on. If you are adding salt 20 minutes before the timer goes off, and because we always put on a timer when we're cooking, don't we? 20 minutes before that cooking timer goes off, you are going to put in your salt. I usually just put in a healthy handful, but we'll say maybe a tablespoon of salt, okay? I don't usually measure. I'm going to say a tablespoon though. And if you want less salt, you can put in a teaspoon, but I normally do a tablespoon of coarse salt or kosher salt. If you have sea salt, maybe use a teaspoon because that's going to be less salt. But usually for boiling water, I put in coarse or kosher salt. You put your salt in and then 20 minutes later, you are going to drain those beans, you cool them, and then you store them in the fridge or you use them in your recipe right away. So it's pretty basic. Now, most beans have the same cooking time, but not all of them are equal. So let's go through them together. So black beans, these are a favorite in Latin American cooking, as well as in Caribbean recipes. I love putting them in burritos. I'll put them in fresh salads. Whenever I'm having Mexican night and I'm trying to do more vegetarian, I almost always include black beans. These get cooked for an hour and a half. I'll include all these cooking times below, and then you can also find more information on the blog. Next up, and it should have been first up because I just put a cup of them to soak overnight, but we have chickpeas, which are also known as garbanzo beans. These also take an hour and a half to cook, like the black beans, and they are great. I'm going to be using mine in hummus, but I also use them when I make falafel, which are basically vegetarian meatballs, and they are great in curries. I'll also use them in bean salads, but that's basically all I use chickpeas for, so if you use them some other way, let me know in the comments below. Usually I just throw things together and if there are cooked chickpeas that are waiting in the fridge that I haven't used yet, I'll just incorporate them in my recipe somehow. And the same goes for all the beans. And since this is all in a weird order now, I'm going to do red kidney beans. So I always use red kidney beans when I am making chili. I'll combine them with navy beans or with great northern beans, which are basically white beans. Great northern beans are larger than navy beans. But I will combine the two and I will use them when I'm making chili. So I have this great recipe for a fiery hot chipotle chili, so that will be linked in the description below. It is a slow cooker recipe and I know we're going into the season where we're moving away from the slow cookers and from the soups and stews and chilies, but awesome in chilies. Also, I think nothing's wrong with chili cheese dogs in the summer. Anyhow, the point is kidney beans are great in soups, they're great in stews, they're great in chilies, and they take an hour to cook. So when the clock is in at 40 minutes, you add your salt, and then they cook for another 20 minutes more. 
And since I was already talking about them, I have navy beans. I don't normally keep both navy and great northern, I just, it's usually one variety of white bean. I do not have a preference, they're both the same in my eyes. Navy beans are great when you're making baked beans, when you're making chili, and just about in anything. So, which is looking for a standard all-purpose bean, navy beans are a great option and they take an hour, just like the red kidney beans but great northern beans reach for them when you're making dips when you're making spreads they do take an hour and a half to cook unlike kidney beans and navy beans white beans are pretty versatile so just use them however you see fit also really good in salads if you're making a bean salad just mix whatever beans you want but i have to say if you are mixing red kidney beans with the white beans and you want the white beans to stay white, don't cook them together because your white beans will take on a pinkish tinge, which isn't a problem for me. I don't care. Everything gets thrown into a chili anyway. It all tastes the same, but if you want them to maintain a whiter color, then separate them when you're cooking them and when you're soaking them. So just a little tip when it comes to bean cookery. So those are the beans that I have. A couple of beans that I don't have that I normally have on hand. Uh, there are pinto beans, which are the queen bean of Tex-Mex. They are the bean to go for when you're making refried beans. And you can use them whole, you can puree them, you can make dips and spreads out of them. And those take an hour and a half to cook. And then the other one that I don't have are black eyed peas. Now black eyed peas are super popular in southern cooking. They're used a lot in Caribbean and in African cuisine. Black eyed peas have a real creamy consistency and they are great with collard greens. Those take an hour and a half to cook. The other legumes that I'm going to be covering today because we're done beans, but they are lentils. And I have three kinds of lentils. I have my brown lentils, of my green lentils. Now green lentils, there are a couple different varieties. You can get French green lentils, like uh, I think they're Dupuis lentils. These are just regular green lentils. And then I have red lentils. And I love red lentils when I'm making burgers. And then I like the green lentils and the brown lentils when I'm making Buddha bowls. If I'm looking just to make a quick legume that won't take any time, these are great options. So for these, you want to rinse them, you pick through them, but you do not soak them like you would with these other beans. So what you do with these, after you rinse them, you put them in a pot with a bit of water. There's no need to measure the water, but if you do want to measure, maybe do three parts water to one part bean. I just make sure that they're well covered. Lentils get brought to a boil and then they simmer for 20 minutes. So it doesn't matter at what point you add the salt, I just do it at the beginning. It's one thing I will also cook in broth if I have extra stock that I need to use. I also like using, I think it's called Better Than Bouillon. It's like a paste. I usually get mine on Costco, but I'll link it below just so you can see what I'm talking about. And I just add a teaspoon to my lentils and I normally do a cup of lentils at a time and I will throw them into salads. The red lentils, they can get mushy, so watch out. That's why I use them predominantly in burgers. Also in soups, I love making a red lentil coconut curry soup with it. But these two, I mostly use them when I'm making Buddha bowls. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a bowl, you include a grain, you include protein, and then vegetables. So I actually do have a video that's all about how to make Buddha bowls. And my video and post, my example that I make are barley lentil Buddha bowls. So that will be linked below if you want to give that a watch. But yes, these are super easy to prepare. It doesn't take much time at all, except if you're making the beans. Most of it is hands off. It's just soaking and then you bring it to a boil and then you simmer and you walk away for 40 minutes to an hour and 10 minutes before you add in a little bit of salt and then you simmer it again for 20 minutes and then you drain and you let it cool and then you pick out <laughs> the kombu, kombu or the bay leaf or you can keep them in and then after they're cool you refrigerate them and then use them in your meal. So meal planning really helps even if you are not a meal planner and you're not too sure what to make for the week why not start the week by just measuring out a cup of whatever bean you want unless it's lentils but whatever bean you want and then build your menu around that. It's just a really basic intro to cooking beans. It's not rocket science. It's one of the easiest things you can do in the kitchen. It's just to cook a pot of beans and it's healthier and it's cheaper and I hope you learned something about cooking beans. Now I'm very curious to hear from you. Do you cook your own beans at home? Do you like buying them from the store? I know the cans are so much more convenient especially if you're in a rush but what are you in the habit of doing? Do you almost always reach for the cans or do you almost always use dried beans like me? 
Anyhow, I really want to hear from you in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear if there are any beans that you like using that I didn't list here today. I'm also intrigued to hear what your favorite recipes are with these beans and lentils. Like, what do you like making with them? That, anyhow, that's it for me for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Vintage Kitchen Vixen. I do put out two new videos a week. Please remember to like this video, leave a comment, and share this video on social media. Otherwise, I will see you real soon. Bye!